Howdy folks, my name is Maury Johnson and I live and believe it or not garden in the Sonoran Desert of Tucson, Arizona. We're only about 70 miles, 115 kilometers north of Mexico. 85% of our days are bright sunshine. Temperatures range from 113 or 45 Celsius to 27 degrees or minus 3 Celsius. Last year was the driest year on record. Normally we receive about 11 and a half inches or 29 centimeters of rain per year, but last year we got only a little over 4 or 10 centimeters. And the air humidity is often in the single digits. I was told when gardening in Arizona, be prepared for things to die. I learned to garden up north, and when I got to Arizona, I had to unlearn everything. One native plant is the choya cactus. Some call it jumping choya because it releases its spiny bits with the slightest contact. A multi-stem tree, the ocotillo, looks perfectly dead most of the year, but it blooms in April, and after a rain it sprouts small green leaves which drop off again as it dries out. Native Americans use them as fences. But the king of the Sonoran Desert has to be the majestic saguaro. It takes 75 years to send out its first arm. You probably think the soil here would be sandy. Far from it. It's actually a finely powdered clay called caliche. The sun bakes it into such a solid brick that rainwater just runs off. If water does puddle, however, you can see how sticky the clay really is. Right behind the house is my desert garden. A year and a half ago, there was almost nothing here. This is a dinner plate prickly pear, Opuntia robusta. When I put it in one year ago, it was a perfect Mickey Mouse in profile. But then a pack rat bit off poor Mickey's nose. Thankfully, Mickey found other ways to grow. This is Opuntia violacea santa rita. It's native to this very county in Arizona. When stressed by cold or drought, it turns a surprising shade of purple. You might well assume that this spiny character is also a cactus. But as Carol Klein told us, there are 2,000 species of Euphorbia. This is Euphorbia roiliana, native to the Himalayan foothills. And this is another Euphorbia, Macrocarpus. It's native to the Baja California Peninsula. But this one is my favorite. It's a totem pole cactus. It's called a totem pole because some people think they see faces in the wiggledy bits. Its Latin name is also quite descriptive. Lophocerius shotii monstrosus. It is quite monstrosus, don't you think? The trumpet flower cactus, Trichalobivia, produces some of the most extravagant blooms. They open at night because they are often pollinated by bats. The flowers last just a few hours, and a month later they produce seedy fruit eaten by jackrabbits and ground squirrels. Let me quickly show you how we propagate cactus in the Sonoran Desert. First, break off a paddle with a bit of a heel. Dig a hole in that darned caliche soil. Plunk it in, fill back around it, and water it now and then when you think of it. In Britain, you can do the same thing using a pot with very gritty compost. When the temperatures top 100 degrees, 38 Celsius, Tucsonans hibernate inside. But the wonderful thing is that I can still fully enjoy my desert garden from the living room. So these are my desert plantings. But this is a tale of two gardens. The secret garden lies just behind this gate. Stay tuned for more.